We start off the season excitingly with 32 seconds of switching lamps on. Not only does Lara turn on the main light last, but she goes full circle even though the main light is directly at the door opening. I know this is done to create a dramatic opening and to not reveal the new set immediately, but I'm not here to be reasonable. I'm here to be a nitpicking asshole. Also, we can conclude there's a fine correlation between falling in love with a vampire and having a lamp problem in your bedroom. Right, Bella Swan? Crater where the lustic used to be is rather small, and so it kind of got stuck. Are you telling me an ancient god got stuck in a tiny hole? Loofy doof, keep your head in the game. Probably just fellowship scholars or visiting professors. La Fontaine and Laura believe this. What you did for me? Finally! For all of us? Never mind. Better wipe that up with some you buy Kotex. Back in a mo. Back in a mo. Oh my god, Laura, this intro must have taken ages to create. People are that hollers. Dead. This is not even trying to be subtle. We saved the campus. No! You didn't! Do you know who did? She did! Also, she's my super hot vampire girlfriend. But that has nothing to do with my bias. Oh my god, what is that? It's Latin. Evil Latin is evil cliche. Don't look at me like that, hon. You decided it was a good idea to fall in love with a bunny sweater removing dog, not me. In 1698, it may as well be morning after her. Knock knock. Did someone order a faux season 2 villain? This rope. <laughs> Evil laughter. She gives him Miss Belmont. I'm not letting Brodzilla kill my sister. Irony. Mel shows her dominance by sitting in an impossible reading position. Why are you talking to me, bro for brains? Mel has a special dictionary for insults with the word bro in it she studies every night before going to sleep. Beef parade, douche canoes, bro for brains. Romeo. Meat cheeks, protein shake, souped up hench bros, muscle mouth. Double Y meatheads, little shaste to be so- Camilla's definitely not jealous in this scene. After watching six episodes of Scandal, either this popcorn is salted or Laura has suddenly developed a sugar allergy. Fun bio fact, the Baron is the great 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 grandson of the hero who freed Styria from the vampiric scourge. Wow, clearly he did a bang up job. Camilla would be excellent at cinema since. You recognize a villain in the Camilla universe because unlike everyone else, they knock at Laura's door. Laura doesn't offer this old gentleman a chair. Instead, she sits down on a chair. Laura Hollis is a dick to Baron Vordenberg. For a second there, the Dean accidentally turned Barry into a dog. While finding clothes for JB, they went for a sheet. But somehow they thought, hmm, this isn't British and Victorian enough. What would help? Oh, I know! A newsboy's hat! I don't believe so, though I am awfully hungry. Also, for some reason, anyone who comes from the Victorian era has to have a British accent. Vordenberg is too bored with the plot development and decided to take a nap instead. Aaron accidentally walks out of the wrong door. Where is that coming from? Is that Latin? Damn you, Latin! It's always fake foreshadowing and low-key death threats with you. Why can we never chit-chat while having a nice cup of tea? While we're at it, I have a bone to pick with last season's Sumerian translation. Camilla says she isn't sure about the symbol, but then Laura later on says... But what if it was supposed to be their world narrows to the celebration? Are you freaking kidding me? Camilla couldn't translate the... I don't know any Sumerian, but I'm calling bibbity bobbity bullshit on that one. Voice to the Hesperides, my hunt for the mighty Yeti Migoy. Family, I met in Novgorod. In the High Court of France. Great affair with the Grand Duchess Anastasia. When I was in the Prussian cavalry with the infamous Montesquieu. My great forest made me one of their brothers. I have bloopers. I am very much going to kill Comet. As if those squabbling children could ever agree on a representative. Please don't say Carmilla. They'll agree on Carmilla. Fuck. I'm done. Me too. That's great. That's really, really great. <laughs> nope. Carmen, I just broke up. <laughs> Laura, honey, that's a pie server, not a spoon. You know Laura's heartbroken when she eats a fucking salad. I mean, 
Do I even need to say it? These weird ass board members. I mean, this dude is an employee at Smoke Bomb called Dylan, and the other one is probably Stefanine in an owl costume, which I have no evidence for, but I just felt like giving her a shout out for no particular reason at all. What if she gets hurt or something worse? Laura needs to stop ironically predict when Camilla gets hurt. You recognize a villain in the Camilla universe because they knock at Laura's door. How about no? Got it! First try. Rep Serioso Conveniosa. Dude, is there blood on the throw? Better wipe that up with some nearby codex. Back with more recriminations. What the f Okay, I'm gonna have to retract this in for that because that's awesome. All I know is that in more than a century, you're the only person I ever found worth saving. But 70 years of those I spent suffocating in a coffin. That were so clearly only for you and you'd say, <laughs> I know you didn't just do it for me. <laughs> Aw, they learned from my sins last year. Wait, that came out wrong. Under her shirt, Maddie wears a locket. Inside of it is a piece of her heart. That's what makes her impossible to kill. Maddie has a horcrux? Also, it's completely stupid to have a piece of your heart right next to your actual heart. How does that make you any harder to kill? And like, do you know how easy it is to lose a necklace? What if she has to go on an airplane? Please remove all your jewelries, ma'am. Well, okay, officer, but please don't drop my locket because my heart is literally in there. Oh my god, are those apples? Danny brought apples not because she feels lonely and has nowhere else to go, but because she knew Laura eating an apple would make her look like even more of an asshole. I used to dream about eating nothing but chips and candy all day. Let me tell you, the disaster era junk food diet has ruined that dream for me. Okay, that sounds fake, but okay. Because he's totally not a di Theo conveniently barges in just in time to keep the show PG-13. Laura freezes up and moves about two pixels to the right in this scene. Always. Wrong brand, Danny. Wrong brand. Is it more important than the evil plot? No, but this is about my character development and a great bonding moment between us, so it's important enough. Wait, I'm sorry. Holstein is breathing the same air and I can no longer function like a normal human being. And I don't know how I'm supposed to feel around you or what I'm supposed to do because... What did you do? I don't know. I can't remember. I don't remember what happened last night, cliche. Are you gonna kill me? I don't know. A character who previously has been shown to actually enjoy killing people now suddenly second guesses for plot reasons. Do you really think that this is a game? This is highly convenient, so we still don't know what happened. Hell, for all I know, Manny and Perry made out after that cut. It's not like you have canon evidence to argue otherwise. Freedom of interpretation, y'all. We are in so much more trouble than I thought. We are in so much more trouble than I thought, cliche. This isn't the Balkans, after all. Dude, that's racist. We start off this episode with a flashback recording because fuck you, that's why. But you know, I did kill his whole family, so... Well, clearly you did a bang-up job. You hear that? That's Jordan Hall laughing her ass off because for a second there you thought she'd give you nice things. Maddie's necklace is so powerful it teleports Vordenberg from this shot into the next dimension in this shot mere seconds later. Tell me what I do. I think you've already done it, darling. Kill your darlings just got on a whole new level of meta. Also, fuck that giraffe shirt and everything it stands for. For what? <laughs> For you. <laughs> Irony. Or, you know, a stake to my heart. But what's the difference at this point, really? Fedos and Camilla have me traumatized and therefore are worthy of a sin. Heck, I'm so generous, I'll make that two sins. Silas University, welcome to La Résistance. <laughs> Marina Satan. Something gruesome, if we're lucky. Perry, you feeling okay? Oh my god, Perry is possessed by the Dean. Smarten up! Or maybe this isn't a story, Laura. Character says it isn't fictional, while it actually is fictional cliche. Perry is out of frame. Having done all that with broken ribs, but... <laughs> Invisible dagger. I thought the library was gone. How did you find it? You found me. How? Is the library a fucking room of requirements now? 
And I've got chocolate and chocolate with bits of cookies in it. Camilla trying to cheer up Laura is definitely worth rejecting a sin for. They didn't kiss here. What if something else has been happening all along? Wait, Paris the Dean? I think I'd remember that. What is happening? <gasps> Apparently nobody ever really dies in the Camillaverse. This program's pro-human bias. Or what? Uh, let's get ready to rumble! I'm done. I can't. I didn't think she'd kill me. Let's call her Lofi. Laura might be dumb enough to trust you, but I'm not. I know what you are. I know what you are. Say it. Out loud. Vampire. What the hell, Lawrence? If they don't have a bow, then you make one, okay? You know how to hunt. Animals? It's no different, Candace. She needs a surgeon. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. Well, what's that then? Just a flesh wound. Or suspected to be vampires. <laughs> Voldemort, Voldemort, ooh, Voldy, 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 Voldemort. Oh my god, what did I do? Nothing you can't spend a long life regretting somewhere else, Cupcake. This is Garnet, back together. But if you and your knight in shining gym shorts over there need more space, then you can find another room. Okay. One. We were on a break! 